I must begin with the obvious. Reality is by no means required to follow our rules of tactical psychology. It is not a divine truth enunciated here. Rather, what is offered is a tactical framework of behaviors that we can reference in social situations where the outcomes will have favorable or unfavorable impacts on our lives. That being said, let us begin. Dear hero, on your journey to mastery of your world, you will be sure to encounter life impact in social situations. Preparing yourself with tactical secrets of psychology is a defense strategy that should never be ignored. Therefore, dear hero, I invite you to take from my disposition these tips and tactics for 31 social situations that you'll be sure to face. The first step, dear hero, is to establish our basic framework for profiling our social prospects. We will recognize three inner forces that affect our behavior. The first force is self-esteem. This is our moral consciousness. It wants to do what is right. The second force is the ego. It can be big or it can be damaged, and it wants to be right. The third force is the body. This is our basic instincts, and it wants self-indulgence. High self-esteem is the safest profile. It is gained through self-control over ego and body drives. We see it as a reflection of how someone treats themselves and others. It is recognized by healthy and honest treatment with concern of one's long-term well-being. Low esteem damages egos. egos. They, they are, are the most dangerous, dangerous to themselves. themselves. They, they are introverted and unassertive. These types, types are quick to apologize when even they, they are not at fault. fault. They, they, they do not say no out of fear of not being liked. liked. They, they, they do, do not defend themselves. themselves. They are high in anxiety levels and tend to be self-destructive. Low esteem, big egos. These are the most dangerous to others. Big egos project greatness. They need attention, are generally loud, frustrating, and constant complainers. Big egos will get angry when admiration is denied. They will offend others to feel superior. They are controlling, boastful, full of bravado, easily offended, and self-absorbed. They may deny credible input and are hypersensitive to criticism. We should definitely take note of the fact that we all experience these types of mentalities from time to time. It is our imperative to manage that. The ego bonds our self-concept to our beliefs. It seeks consistency and prominence even if it is not in our best interest to do so. The ego is nurtured through a lack of self-awareness and self-control. A person with high self-esteem cannot have a big or damaged ego. Self-control leads to self-respect. Without self-respect, self-worth becomes a direct reflection of the opinions of others. This emotional dependency creates exhaustion from the perpetual alertness directed at obtaining self-worth feedback. This exhaustion leads to overly dramatic responses to almost every situation. A threatened ego's only defense is anger. It either directs it at itself or others. Primary decision-making factors. One, self-esteem. How much we like ourselves the worthiness of reward. 2. Confidence. How competent we feel in a situation. 3. Interest level. How much we care about an outcome. Secondary decision-making factors. 1. Effort. How much work. 2. Justification. Self-vision. 3. Beliefs. Regardless of facts. 4. Mood. The current state of mind. Factor. Interest type. For low self-esteem, it is immediate gratification. Factor, interest type for high self-esteem is long-term investment. Factor, confidence for low self-esteem is lower. Factor, confidence for high self-esteem is higher. Factor, effort for low self-esteem is exaggerated. Factor, effort for high self-esteem is less perceived. Factor, beliefs for low self-esteem is self-serving. Factor, beliefs for high self-esteem lets falsities go. Factor, justification for low self-esteem is distorted. Factor, justification for high self-esteem is clear. Factor, mood for low self-esteem is significant. Factor, mood for high self-esteem is not important. Situation 1. Change a mind. Facts that challenge identity create a fight or flight response. People will use emotional stories to back up their original thought. Step 1. Warn that the new fact may be wrong before you present it. Step two, replace their emotional story with a new one. Step three, repeat the new fact. Step four, give them time to evaluate after you present it. Remember, the ego is everything in persuasion. Avoid challenging it. 
Situation 2. Gauging interest levels. Problem. The more we want something, the greater we distort the details to suit our wants. Solution. Ask yourself, if this were happening to a friend, what would I tell them? And then do that for yourself. Tactic 1. Self-interest is a rule of motivation. When curious about interest, observe what is not said or done. Being too busy is a sign of low self-interest. Ask for an investment like time, money, or effort, and see if you get excuses or compliance. Tactic 2. Curiosity requires feedback. Filter out the uninterested by requiring an investment. For example, send a blank email, make eye contact with a stranger, and wave. An interested party will inquire about it. Tactic 3. Confidence is proportional to interest levels. The more interested we are, the greater our concern is with our ability to get it. Step 1. Introduce a threat to the attainability of a prize and gauge for a shift in mood. Step 2. Reintroduce the attainability to rule out false positives. Gauge mood. An interested party will get upset with the loss of the attainability and become happier when it is reintroduced, whereas the uninterested will likely show no mood shift. Situation 3. Liked or Disliked. Tactic 1. Pair the situation or element in question to a neutral stimuli. Example, wave a blue or black pen around while talking about it. Observe the prospect's feelings towards the paired stimuli. Tactic 2. Premise. We tend to project our true feelings onto conversations. Ask how someone is feeling indirectly by asking about a neutral subject, like the forecasted weather. Tactic, Tactic 3. three. Observe, Observe prospect's use of language. Of language. Is it positive, positive or negative? negative. Be aware of the emphasis. They may manipulate your perspective. perspective. Tactic, Tactic four. 4. Add a positive, positive marker, marker to the subject of conversation and then observe whether their process attaches itself to the positive marker. marker. Example, say they read sex they see. They like, like it if they mention read reading. Reading. Situation 4. True feelings or mood. mood. Note, Note, confidence equals experience plus feedback plus comparisons plus authenticity. Tactic 1. Observe self-concept, how they handle themselves in the present. We can tell what has happened by what is happening. Tactic 2. Magical thinking. Bring an odd experience like UFOs to the prospect's attention and gauge for a positive or negative outlook on it. Time this tactic with the event you want information about. Tactic 3. When we are in a good mood, we tend to be more forgiven of the past. Correlate the subject you want information about with something that had happened in the past. Mood is usually a function of the future. If you can rule out a recent event, you can assume a person's mood is based on how they see the future. a threat to the suspect's potential for success and observe mood. If unbothered, this person lacks confidence. Note, bluffers will act with caution and avoid upsetting the person they are trying to bluff. If a person appears unbothered by intentional annoyances, it is a sign that they lack confidence and are bluffing. Situation 6. Is this person hiding something? Tactic 1. Allude to the situation and engage comfort levels. Distancing equals hiding. Engagement equals innocence. Tactic 2. Do not accuse, but inform your suspect of the situation. A guilty person will try to convince you that they are innocent, whereas an innocent person will engage in the conversation about the situation. Tactic 3. If you think someone knows something specific, present them with three evenly available options, with one option being the specific information or situation you know about. Gauge the suspect's interest in the options. We tend to gravitate towards what we are familiar with. Or, you can explain the facts and change one fact to a false one. A guilty party will have a heightened interest in the false fact. Tactic 4. Attach your suspicion to a fact you know about the, about the suspect, but completely unrelated. Hiding or denying the fact and suspicion is a sign of guilt, whereas acknowledging the fact but denying the suspicion is a sign of innocence. Tactic 5. High stakes plus a secret partner. Inform your suspect that you, them and your confederates are both suspects. Attach an unwelcome quality to the guilty person. Gauge the comfort levels of your suspect towards your confederate. If they are unbothered by the confederate, your suspect is displaying guilty knowledge. Tactic 6. Premise. A guilty person will always try to appear innocent. Ask your suspect, how would you do it? An easy or obvious answer is a sign of innocence and likely the very action a guilty party is trying to hide. 
whereas an overly complicated or a secret answer is a sign of guilt. Situation 7. Ally or saboteur? Tactic 1. Ask suspect for help with something. Make suspect believe that their contribution is not inherently visible. A saboteur only wants to appear to be helpful and will use the opportunity to act out against the goal. Tactic 2. Helpful people need free and accurate exchanges of information to be helpful. Introduce false information to see if your suspect corrects you or not. This must be something you know that they know. Tactic 3. Build, build up to a large request. request. Ask, Ask for a no-risk no investment. Follow up with a request of an actual investment, like time, money, or effort. A helpful person will identify with the cause and be inclined to invest. Tactic 4. Allies tend to be interested in our lives. See if your suspect follows up on a significant event in your life or not, especially when you allude to them. Tactic 5. Illuminate your suspicion to your suspect. An ally will become upset and stay upset for the duration of the encounter. A saboteur only wants to convince you that they are unsuspicious. Accept their feedback no matter how absurd it is and engage their mood afterwards. Someone who seems pleased with themselves for convincing you to drop your suspicions and does not appear upset with you for doubting their integrity is likely a saboteur. Situation 8. Charisma. Mirror behavior to encourage empathy. Warmth, admiration, and sincerity are magnetic traits. Humility is admirable and relatable. Morality is charismatic strength. Optimism is contagious. Smile. The enlightened makes people more willing to cooperate with you. Don't force action. Encourage one's natural good nature to help. Situation 9. Attractiveness. Activities and environments with high arousal, this means exciting, raise perceived attractiveness. Flexibility makes one's body language appear more youthful. Make direct eye contact when speaking and listening. Injured self-esteem makes people receptive and relatable. Reciprocal liking encourages hope. Situation 10. Seduction. Show confidence in sexual body language with prolonged eye contact. Counter defensive body language with polite and relaxing gestures. Move into arousal distance of personal space. Do not touch. Get in close proximity. The goal is to be touched and confidently and calmly accept it. Romance with the eyes. Do not sway to others. Three quarters shut and a sideways glance is sexy. Be polite, knowledgeable, confident, and opportunistic. Obvious open and sexual body language indicates availability. Be confident. Do not use face saving techniques. That is for the seductee to use. Remember, romance is about getting closer. It's a big difference between sex and romance. Savor romantic moments to strengthen bonds. Remember, it's a gift of trust when your partner defines romance to you. Situation 11. Effective leadership. No, appeal to and assist with the passions and desires of others in your group. Show that you care before you show what you know. Do not get lured into an argument. Be simple, clean, and organized. Never confuse passion with authority. Don't be overly emotional. Being respectful of others increases charisma. Show humility. An ego weakens influence by separating yourself from others. Be a warm, protective, and self-controlled leader and expect the same from your group members. Situation 12. Influencing groups. Express an opinion multiple times in different ways. Sway individuals one at a time to gain strength in numbers. Express opinions with confidence and flexibility. Appeal to emotions and provide a plan for desired success. Emphasize how the idea prevents negative consequences. Make a good first impression and use third parties to promote your virtues. Rephrase difficult questions into more difficult questions to buy time when you're answering. Emotion and social proof, which is what others do, are more motivating than logic is. Situation 13. Gain and keep loyalty. Communicate with everyone at every opportunity. Have an open door policy with frequent face-to-face -face communication. Offer encouragement and praise appropriately. Tactic 1. Give information and authority to turn an outsider into an insider. Tactic 2. Express genuine greatness through honest actions. Note, the quickest way to treachery is through dishonest leadership. Tactic 3. Use small requests to build an identity of loyalty to you. Tactic 4. Be loyal to earn loyalty. Be supportive and understanding. Fulfill favors to create emotional debt to you. Tactic 5. Show you are worthy of support by expressing gratitude consistently. Situation 14. Productivity and morale. Tactic 1. Create a policy of value and communication. Reward goals, ideas, or contributions. 
Tactic Tactic to to socialize, socialize, appreciate, and recognize, recognize team, team members. members. Note, Note this is important, important to punish underperformers under for fruitful morale, morale and equally, equally important, important to establish, establish yourself as the leader in their opinion, opinion before you deploy punishments. punishments. Tactic, Tactic 3. Invest in relationships, relationships between managers and employees. And employees. Tailor, Tailor tasks to teach each member's personality. Tactic, Tactic 4. Do not overvalue money as a productive motivator. Relationships, interest in more important work, work and creative freedom, freedom are more important, important to people's happiness than money is. is. Situation 15. Make big changes without upsetting group members. Encourage volunteering to go along with the change. Invoke desire with big picture plus creative freedom plus results progress. Make the change appear easy and simple. Avoid the use of harsh language. Convey vague information in a calm and relaxed manner. Demonstrate the benefits of the change. Allow time to pass to process the change. Shift perspective by showing reasons to appreciate one's own position in the big change. Situation 16. Breaking bad news. Avoid harsh language. Deflate impact with passing of time. Frame the situation to diffuse the significance of personal impact. Release in small increments. Situation 17. Painlessly criticize. Remove criticism from the event. Do it at a later time and in a different place. Avoid harsh language, tones, and gestures. Show warmth in your motivations. Keep it private. Start with a compliment. Criticize the act, not the person. Don't assume they do it knowingly. Share some of the responsibility. Offer a solution. This is important. Do not attempt to criticize without one. Let them know others do it too. Situation 18. Resolving conflicts. Isolate conflict participants. Personalize the conflict. Reframe it into how they feel about each other. Strive to establish mutual respect. Demonstrate the consequences of group conflict. Situation 19. Managing troublemakers. Understand self-esteem and ego levels to manage accordingly. High self-esteem. Manage with proper role modeling. Low esteem. Damaged ego. Encourage proper behavior by accepting the individual. Low esteem. Aggressive ego. Reframe their personal identity into one that measures up to expectations. Avoid defensiveness in an argument. Reject their premise and go on the offensive. Make them clarify and defend their position. Keep asking, why is that? Objective is to have them explain why they are right instead of you providing reasons why you are right. Refuse ownership by only using the pronoun you. Condescending advice is provocative. Diffuse with gratitude. Reword questions to address motivations behind them. Situation 21. Keys to creating an identity of commitments. Internal momentum. Get prospect to vocalize intent to complete the task. Request an estimated time of completion. Create obligation by showing their contribution to the overall plan. Appeal to their reputation by relaying your dependency on them. Have them explain the actions they will take. Situation 22. Preventing theft. Honesty and dishonesty starts at the top. Be a proper role model. A standard code of ethics will help avoid confusion. Open and frequent communication offers feelings of value and prevents separation of employer-employee relationship. Personal environments discourage abuse. Get to know everyone. Offer alternatives to thefts, like cash advantages. Be supportive in bad situations. Allow for confidential reporting of fellow employees. Situation 23. Signals of friendship. Loyalty. They keep secrets. Pride. They congratulate without envy. Honesty. They tell you what you need to hear, even if you don't want to hear it. Respect. They do not push against personal boundaries. Sacrifice. They are willing to compromise or invest in your decisions. Situation 24. Assimilating saboteurs. Establish reciprocal liking by showing admiration. Show genuine enthusiasm around them. Smile. Be supportive, not critical. Be trusting, not suspicious. Proactive appreciation discourages feelings of exploitation. Always listen fully. Half listened to feels like being half ignored. It is disrespectful. Allow for their contribution. Isolation encourages treachery. Share yourself. Humanize their image of you through emotion. Optimism is magnetic. We all want sincere warmth in our lives. Focus on their ego more than their complaints. Listen, em empathize, accept. Make offer to re reconcile.
ask for favors. This will cultivate an identity of compatibility. Whenever we do something for free, our brain is forced to rationalize the behavior, such as it likes the action or wants to do it. Too often we do things for others in an attempt to get them to like us. In reality, people only do free things for people they like. Situation 25. To win rude people over. Note. Rudeness occurs because someone thinks you dislike them, someone is threatened by you, someone may be rude to everyone, or you gave someone a reason to dislike you. To win them over, expect to be liked. Express affinity to a third party. Show interest in them directly. Highlight similarities. Encourage comfort and acceptance. Remember, avoid taking verbal abuse personally. Leave if all else fails. Situation 26. Get in forgiveness. Sincere and specific apologies work best. Take responsibility. Show remorse and face consequences. Explain how it will not happen again. Root behavior and fear. Show no gain or enjoyment. Allow time to pass. Situation 27. Get in back lost customers. Approaching prospect is in a good mood. Give control to the prospect. Be quick and easy. Request no commitments. Give new information before requesting their return. Reassure the prospect with warmth and reward. Shape identity with your language. For example, you enjoy our service. Express gratitude for feedback. Request feedback if it's not offered. Be empathetic and appeal to their ego in the request for their return. Situation 28. Collect in debt. Be understanding and personal. Use a third party to respectfully distance yourself. Soften the blow with the language you use. Make it personal with tactful recognition of their social responsibility. Never express contempt. Treat the debtor as if they will pay in full. Strive for an undismissed request. Get any commitment you can. Use a large request to negotiate a small one. Let them decide on the commitment. Situation 29. Dilute the impact of bad publicity. Be proactive. Silence implies guilt and apathy. Apologize and explain. Take responsibility and be sincere. Give the full story. Allow for the dissipation of interest to begin. Be vague with the negative and explicit with the positive. Move on. Focus on crisis recovery. Situation 30. Dealing with bad gossip. Tactic 1. Expose the rumor creator to remove anonymity. Humanize their interview by conveying its impact on you. Tactic 2. Make rumors unbelievable by embellishing and exaggerating them. Show humility and guilt. Tactic 3. Discourage gossip by encouraging group loyalty. Give public praise to those who keep secrets. Tactic 4. Appeal to gossipers for help to stop the rumors. Other tips. Be bold when calling attention to unacceptable behavior. Ask for advice from the very person you suspect created the problem. Distance the conversation from the initial event to lower defenses. Understanding and warmth encourage honest participation. Third parties can increase comfort in confessions. Situation 31. Getting along with the emotionally unwell. Consider your good actions as acts of compassion towards a sick individual. Be enthusiastic for being around them. Show appreciation and trust in them. Be attentive to their needs. Ask for their help. Elicit favors. Encourage independence and freedom to avoid their cultivation of emotional dependency on you. In closing, dear hero, I cannot emphasize enough that one must employ caution when deploying psychological tactics on others. Misuse can and will destroy good relationships. These relationships enrich in our lives far more than anything materialistic in nature has the capacity to provide. One can only benefit from fiercely protecting these relationships consistently. Go forth, dear hero, and remember our most dangerous enemy is our own ignorance and indifference to our own faults.